Hey, Meisner Makers, it is Wednesday, and you know what that means, Workshop Wednesday at 1. So I'm here today with Jody, and she's going to be taking you through a Dresden Table Runner project. I love the Dresden plate um, it, for several reasons. One, there are just so many variations, and I love it when I can start with one technique and then just take it in so many different directions. And if you're unfamiliar with Dresden, I think you're really going to enjoy this. And then later on, Google Dresden plate or go to Pinterest and do a search for Dresden plate and just see how many different variations are out there. It's also a really good block uh, if you are a newer quilter, because in this block, you've got some very simple piecing, you've got simple applique, and it's a way to create something that is very um, complicated looking without a lot of complicated piecing. First time I might ever did a Dresden and you were successful. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So before Jody gets started, I want to talk a little bit about machine setup. So today, Jody's going to be using the Baby Lock Soprano, which is a fantastic machine for travel. It's a great in the middle of the road machine if you are uh, looking to update your current entry level sewing machine. You're going to be wanting, you're wanting to do a little more sewing um, this year, and you're looking for a few more features. So it does have needle stop up and down. It does have a nice stitch package. It does have a slide speed control. Uh, just a great machine to take you to that next level. Now, regardless of what brand of sewing machine you're gonna be working with, when we're piecing, we do wanna work with a quarter inch foot. Um, quilt patterns are written with a quarter inch seam allowance and by using a quarter inch foot, it's gonna be just that much easier to make sure that you're maintaining that proper seam allowance throughout the entirety of your project. Critical to maintain a consistent seam allowance. As you're working with your blocks, each time you add another piece of fabric, if your seam allowance is off, it becomes compounded and compounded and compounded. And what seemed like a very minor error at the beginning can result in a block that is just completely incorrect as far as the measurements are concerned. Now, depending on your personal preference, really, there are several different types of quarter inch feet to select from. Now, each brand has multiple types of feet. We're gonna look at the baby lock feet today, but again, regardless of which machine you have, there is an appropriate quarter inch foot for you. So give us a call if you need some help to select the appropriate foot for your particular machine make and model. Can I interject something right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. I have actually bought all four mm -hmm. until I found the one that worked for me and that I loved. Yep. And so I am gonna use the one with the flange on the side of it today. Uh -huh. Um, cause that's what I used at home, but the other ones are really good. It's just what you kind of get used to and you feel comfortable with sewing. Exactly. And I noticed that when I sew, I don't sit in front of my machine. I sit over to the side. And so when you're trying to walk your, mm -hmm. the sewing's off a little bit. So having that flange helps me stay on track. Yep. So a lot of it is personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's technique. So when you're using the foot with a flange, for example, mm -hmm. works really well for long straight rows of stitching. Um, I personally, prefer to have a foot without a flange if I'm doing things like triangles because then the flange pushes up on those dog yeah. ears. Um, so it is good to have a number of feet in your arsenal. Now one thing that is consistent with all quarter inch feet is they're going to be flat on the bottom, okay? Because you're sewing a straight stitch and you want as much contact between the bottom of the foot and the bed of the machine as is possible. Um, something else I'd like to mention as well is not only is the quarter inch foot itself important, but I would use a straight stitch plate for my machine. That's going to give you maximum support on the bottom. It's, it's all quarter inch feet are straight stitch feet. Most quarter inch feet are straight stitch feet. That's going to give you the most contact between the foot, the fabric, and the throat plate. And that's going to give you the most consistent and perfect straight quarter inch seam. So on this particular foot, and you do want to look at the instructions for each foot, my quarter inch marking is right here. All I have to do is align the edge of my fabric with the edge of that foot, and I will maintain a consistent quarter inch seam. Now a lot of quarter inch feet also have markings on the side. One is to show you where your needle is. The other is to show you a quarter inch ahead of the needle and a quarter inch behind the needle. 
Now for some more advanced piecing techniques, if you're in setting seams, that's when you would use those markings and it eliminates the need for you to have to actually mark the fabric itself. So this is a relatively basic quarter inch foot. Some machine brands have a clear quarter inch foot. It is exactly the same as the quarter inch foot that we just looked at, flat on the bottom, straight stitch foot, markings to show you where the needle is, a quarter inch ahead, a quarter inch behind. Then there is the quarter inch foot with the flange or what I call the bumper guard. Okay, it gives you a place for your fabric to rest and prevents it from sneaking out the side. Okay, and again, it has that quarter inch marking ahead of the needle, at the needle, and behind the needle. Now, the feet that we're looking at, if you notice the toe on the left hand side of the foot, yep, left hand side of the foot is a little more narrow. That's to give you an eighth inch marking. Okay, so there are some times when you're piecing minis or you're doing paper piecing where that's helpful to have. And then this particular foot, for some machines that have wider feed dogs, what you may find is a foot that's kind of chunky out here and then narrows in at the position where you're watching the fabric as it guides underneath. And that's, that design is to give you a little extra contact, again, between the feed dogs, the fabric, and the bottom of the foot, okay? So again, we're happy to help you make a decision about the presser foot that you need for your particular machine. You can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at MeisnerSewing.com or give us a call here at 916-920-2121. Now, while we're on the topic of presser feet, Jody's also gonna work with an edge joining foot today. This foot, the key um, characteristic of an edge joining foot is it has a little wall down through the middle. Don't confuse this with a blind hem foot. A blind hem foot, that flange goes all the way through the back. So the area where your needle sits has a bar running through it. That's not gonna give you the same result as working with an edge stitching foot. With an edge stitching foot, it does have a little uh, indentation in the back. So there's more room for stitching to go open across the needle area so that you can move your needle freely from right to left. And in some cases, you may want to use a zigzag stitch or some other type of bridging or joining stitch. That's not possible if you are working with a blind hem foot where that shank or that flange goes all the way through to the back. Okay, so you do wanna look for, in, for this type of project, an open edge stitching foot. Uh, do make sure that it's open in that needle area. There are some that have that are meant for a straight stitch and it's a stitch in the ditch foot, not an edge joining foot, okay? So that is a distinction you wanna be careful of. All right, cameraman Joel, we have covered presser foot anatomy. Jody, are you ready to start stitching this fantastic Dresden plate? Yes, and I'm gonna start from the beginning and explain everything that we need to, to look at, how we need to get it set up and how we need to get rolling so we can sit down and start making our project. All right, let's get moving. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you what's inside the box. First, you're gonna have a Dresden fan quilt. Then you are going to have 24 pieces of fabric to cut your fans out. You're going to have your backing and you're also gonna have your binding. That's what comes in here. Now, <clears throat> there's enough fabric to make a quilt or you can do a table runner. What I'm gonna do with mine is, is I'm gonna make my table runner smaller and I'm gonna take four of these fans together and do a 48 by 48 <clears throat> table piece because I don't, really want, I don't really want the quilt. So you have a lot of options because you can do a whole lot of different things with all of these fans. So I'm now gonna show you how to start getting prepared to cut out your fabric and get ready to sew. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to prepare getting your fan blades cut. So inside you're going to take and make a template and I mounted mine on the back of a, a uh, folder and, um, and then I cut it out and then I ironed all of my fabric and you can use a press spray and iron it flat. 
I took a marking pencil, whichever one is your favorite. Doesn't matter. And I started tracing all the way around this way. I flipped it and I went in this direction. I went into this direction and I continued to flip on 20 pieces of this fabric. Four of these pieces of fabric are going to be used for your center fan and the rest of them are all used for your fan blades. So depending on if you're going to go ahead and, and, and do the quilt, go ahead and cut them all out for the numbers that you need. It does stay inside the pattern. How many fan petals that you need for the quilt and for the table runner. So with that, so once you've got that prepared, we're now going to go over to the sewing machine. Now we're going to change on to our quarter inch foot. So on the back of the machine, there is a little black button. You press it in, foot comes right off. Take your other one and just snap it right up. As soon as you can align it. Okay. Now we're gonna take our fan and we're now going to start sewing these together. And uh, when you're doing a whole bunch of these, it's really best to chain piece so you don't have a lot of stop and starts. So this is what I mean by chain piece. And I sew the first one, I go on to the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and I just do a whole roll of them. And I don't cut them until I've completely sewn all of them together. That is a quarter inch that we're gonna be doing. You do not have to tack at the beginning and at the end so there's no forwards and backwards stitching whatsoever. You're going to take the widest end and you're going to fold it in half. And you're going to go ahead and sew your quarter inch. Mine is set at a 2.5. Depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I'll go down to about a two. And here's my second one. I'm just gonna butt it along. And so I, I'll have my whole string of Of my, of my uh, fan blades. Next, I need to then take and trim them at a 45 right here, but make sure that you don't trim so close that you, trip, you uh, clip the tip. And I need to turn this inside out so it is no longer right sides together, but wrong sides together. Now, they had a suggestion that you take and make a card that is four by four and draw a line from corner to corner. So I was following their instructions and it's like, okay, that sounds like a really good idea. But after doing um, a lot of these, I didn't care for how the tip came out. So I found something in my house. It's actually a tool for folding cards, increasing your cards. And that I liked that worked a lot better. So I turned this inside out I took and put the seam to the right side of the of where the edge is and I just lightly poked and look at that great tip that I have right there. And then when I went to iron, I made sure that it all laid down to one side and it was right down the center and I ironed all of mine. So the next step that we're going to now do is we are now going to sew five of these together. Now, what this board right here is, is I went to um, a store and got 12 by 12 art boards and covered them with flannel. And I'm using these as demoing, holding the the quilt blocks for you to demoing, but you could also use this for auditioning what you want your blocks to look like. So you can 
do I want that one on here? Does that look good next to that? And you can play around with it and you can see what they're gonna look like. So these make great auditioning boards, but what we're gonna do next is we're now going to sew a quarter inch side seaming, making sure that we are matching our, our valleys. Here's our peaks and here's our valleys. Now on these, I did not chain. I did one at a time and then just added on to the fan. And after I sewed five of them together, I pressed it all to one side. And there's the back of my fan. The next thing you need to do to finish this one block up is we need to now create this corner half circle here. This, this, this cover right here on the fan blades. And how you do that is, in your instructions, it's gonna ask you to do two prints of the circles, tape them together and cut them out, and then this becomes your template. So on the four pieces of fabric that you held to the side, you're going to put it down and you're going to take your marker and you're going to mark all the way around. Now, I will tell you, I did a faux pas on this, and the first thing I noticed was when I marked it down, I, I sewed a quarter inch from where I marked because I didn't pay attention, and this was when I marked a quarter of an inch. I, I sewed from a quarter inch from the mark, and I just went along doing the same thing, but when you're doing the circle, you need to sew on your marked line, not a quarter inch from it. You'll also notice that there are four little marks that you're going to put on your template right there because we're going to cut these in quarters. When you're sewing this, you're also going to put a piece of stabilizer to the back, just a lightweight stabilizer, and you're going to sew it. Then you are then going to cut it in fours, this way and this way. And then you're going to trim around to where it's only about an inch wide left over. Or you can trim that out first on this and then do your quarter inch. I then press that so that it's all nice and flat. I took my background piece of fabric, which is 12 and a half by 12 and a half. I lined up my fan blades first. Okay, so now we're gonna do some top stitching and that's how we're gonna keep the fan blades on top of the back panel. So we now need to switch to our, our edge joining foot. Again, you just pop off the back. You can do this however works best for you. Now this is where it becomes really important about where your needle sits. So the blade, I want this blade lined up right with the edge of where I need to sew. Now I will say I put a couple of pins in here and then I put some tape, washable tape on both sides over here to help keep it even. I then moved my needle position over to where I wanted it to be. And I actually did a practice piece before I did it on here to make sure I got it as close to, but not too close or too far away. And I just went ahead and sewed right along, keeping this even with the edge of my fabric. 
for my peaks and my valleys. And I did that all the way around. And when that was done, I took, I'll do it on this one. I'll take, I took my one quarter piece and I lined it up, making sure that it covered everything. All the edges were equal. And I did the same thing. I just top stitched all the way around here. I now have my first block done. And now you're going to do as many blocks as you need to do for what you want to do. And that's all there is to doing the fan block. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up today's project today by myself. Um, Jennifer is out looking for our next Wednesday uh, project. And so I will bring this home. So this is how you finish off your block. You, you can make the whole quilt. Everything is done exactly the same. Each block is done exactly the same. You're just gonna add on to it. You can flip them whichever way you want. You can be very, very creative with this. Here is the kit. It is a, a Riley Blake kit. Everything is, is in there that you need for the fabric. And um, I think that that is just about it, Joel. I think that this was a lot of fun to do. Like I said, I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's going to give you a chance to try a couple of different feet if you've never tried uh, these feet. I do know that when I was sewing on my edge, I actually didn't have that foot, so I had to compromise. So I was really pleased to have that one today. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed what I showed you today and can't wait to show you what we're doing next week. You guys have a wonderful week and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.